Welcome to today's part of this SPSS methodology, this time with a unit on multidimensional scaling. What's multidimensional scaling all about? We can imagine this as we have n-dimensional objects, so something which we no longer can in any easy way understand or, well, in particular cannot represent in any sensible way in some kinds of diagrams. However, this could be the typical output of a cluster analysis, for example. We want to analyze, we want to represent, more on here on representation than on analyzation, we want to represent the results, how different observations lie in regards to each other. However, as I said, we cannot represent anything which is more than three-dimensional. So we need to find a roundabout solution. This roundabout solution is the multidimensional scaling. So we're uh, considering here how, if the distances between different data points remain more or less the same, would this look like in two dimensions. And that's what multidimensional scaling does. It calculates the distance in n dimensions, then try to find a two-dimensional representation which sticks as close as possible to those distances. And how is this done? If we go to analyze, we might consider this has something to do with classify or with dimension reduction. That's not so wrong, but here we have a specific menu for multidimensional scaling, which is here the scale. We see already here we have the point multidimensional scaling and of those two, for our purposes, Proxcal is actually the most more suitable one. So we go with Proxcal. Then we have here the possibility we can tell him data are proximities, so we do not have to calculate something from the data or we can go with create proximities from the data. So usually this is selected we keep with the second one with the create proximities from data. Click on define. We'll just reset this. We can then think here about variables which we want to represent. In this case, this method can work with binary data, with count data as well, but it usually should be this same scale level which we implement here. So here we could, for example, go with spendings, we could go with age, people in household, and income. In this case, we have four different variables, meaning we have a four-dimensional problem. We want to represent this four-dimensional problem, those four-dimensional data points, the respective observations, in a two-dimensional diagram. Before we do this, we first click here on measure because we have one problem with our data. One problem in so far as spendings is measured on a scale in euros, age in years, additional people in household is just count values, and income again in euros. So first off, we need to standardize this. For this, we can best use Z-scores. and I do not want to get distances between those th four variables, but for all my cases. So I switch here from distance between variables, which would give me like an overview for the four different points represented by the variables, to between cases, so for all my cases. Then, well, I could select up here different measures. As I said, this works as well for binary or count data. Here we only have metric data, so we go, as is pre-selected, with the Euclidean distance. However, we could also switch to different distance measures. Click on Continue and OK. Then we get our result here. Short summary and a short goodness of this test. Whereas we could say those values should be as small as possible, because stress means how much problems arises when we try to fit our data into two dimensions. So if we have something here which is very close 
to 0. In this case, first one is 0 0.0395, so it's rather close. Even those values, they are rather close to 0, not smaller than 1. So, this is actually a decent result, what we get here. Then, the next part, that's our coordinates, our two-dimensional coordinates for the different cases. As we can see here, we have only 10 cases, so we will have, in the graphic afterwards, 10 different points. So those are our 10 different points, or basically their two-dimensional representation, because they have, each point is four-dimensional, but this is how it would look like if distances were more or less kept in two dimensions. And well, this could be easier interpreted and it's way easier to be understood for, for someone who's not so familiar with the mathematical background than some kind of table stating four-dimensional coordinates. So this is an easy way to representing data and in the two-dimensional space possibly getting an idea which of them could be similar to each other, which of them could be different from each other. So this then already covers all the aspects I wanted to talk about regarding multidimensional scaling. And I hope you learned something from this section and you enjoyed listening to it. And if you want to see more of this type, feel free to visit the rest of this SPSS methodology. Until then, see you and goodbye.